Hey everyone, I'm Logan and welcome back to another episode of Living in Lex. Today we're going to talk about a topic in Lexington that I am extremely passionate about and that is tips to make your move to Lexington, Kentucky easy. I'm a local real estate agent in Lexington native, so I've got a pretty good idea on what it takes to make your home buying or selling experience pretty easy considering I work with them on a daily basis. I also work with many of you all, my fans, whenever you reach out saying that you're interested in moving to Lexington within the next year or two. Absolutely love it when you reach out. Be sure to text, call, email me at any time. If you're too thinking about the move to Lexington, I'll be sure to leave my information down below. Let's jump into the video of the tips to make your move easy. We're going to talk about six tips today and be sure you hang around to the end of the video as we're going to be talking about the magic formula to winning in this hot competitive market we're in. So let's talk about moving to Lexington, Kentucky and tips to make it easy. The first thing you should do when you're making your move to Lexington or even thinking about it is to contact us. I know I've said it many, many times before, but I really do love it when you all reach out. And the first thing you really need to do before making a move anywhere is get in touch with a local real estate agent. And considering that is the primary thing that I do do, it only makes sense. We have contacts with lenders, home inspectors, contractors, anything you might need during the moving process. We can get you in touch with the right people as well as set you on track to the best path to getting your dream home. The next thing you should do and tip number two that I have is determine the lifestyle you or whoever you're buying the house with want to live. I can't stress how important this step is in determining the lifestyle you all want to live. It can largely affect the kind of home you buy and decide to live in. If you're the kind of person that loves downtown living, while Lexington doesn't have a ton of it, we do have some, and you're probably looking at an older home. So if you don't like older homes as well, you might be sacrificing that. If you have a family, you might not want to live in the downtown atmosphere. You might like some of the more suburb areas of Lexington. There's lots of scenarios I can talk about, but determining the lifestyle you want to live is a really, really important important and crucial step to me as a real estate agent and you as the buyer. Your lifestyle will tell us the kind of house you're looking for and probably the area you're looking at. It might not tell us the price range, but tip number three covers that. My tip number three is to get pre-approved by a lender or get your proof of funds if you're paying in cash ready to go before you buy. When you go to purchase a home, sellers want to see that you can actually afford to purchase that home. The way that you can tell this is a pre-approval letter by a lender saying that you can afford X amount of dollars or proof of funds from your bank saying you have X amount of dollars in your bank account and that usually covers the cost of the home. It's really important to do this before you start looking because sometimes in this market, Homes go so fast within a day or two, sometimes even hours, that if you're not pre-approved already and haven't taken the time to talk to a local lender, you may miss out on a home that you really love. Also, I've got a lot of local lender contacts, so if you reach out to me, I can get you in touch with one right away. You can get pre-approved for a loan through anyone you want. I like local people because you get more of a hands-on experience with them, sometimes even lower interest rates. It really depends on the lender, but the experience you have with the local people I find is on average is a little bit better than it is with the national franchise banks. Now that you've gotten in contact with a local real estate agent, you've determined the lifestyle that you want to live and know the kind of home that you're looking for and have been pre-approved by a lender or have received proof of funds from your bank, it's time for tip number four. Now, tip number four relates to the home search itself, which is probably the most fun part of the journey. Tip number four is to be available and listen more and it'll make sense. In this market, sometimes homes can go really fast. And if you're not available to go look at it, take a virtual showing, or even open your phone to see the listing that's been sent to you, you might miss out on the perfect opportunity for you. It really does break my heart whenever a client reaches out to me a couple days later after I tried to show them a house and they said, oh, this one would have been perfect for me and I knew it was perfect for them. It really hurts me on the inside. So just be available and be ready to see the homes, whether that's in person or virtual it could go a long way. I can be pretty flexible with people and I'm more than happy to do in-person or virtual showings. Tip number five, and this one is very, very important, and that's to ask lots of questions, especially when you may not understand something fully. We real estate agents do a very good job of breaking down the process of buying a home and selling a home very simply. And when we do that, we tend to oversimplify it. The process of purchasing and selling a home is a complicated process with a lot of moving parts. The average person 
person may only buy a few homes in their entire lifetime. So when you do it, it's likely years apart. And it's difficult to remember something you did yesterday, let alone five to 10 years ago. So whether you've never purchased a home or it's been a long time since you've done it, or you just haven't done it much, be sure to ask your real estate agent lots of questions. That's literally what we're here through to help you through that process. A lot of the mistakes or snags that happen in transaction can largely be avoided if someone had just asked questions, and that's on the real estate agent as well as the client as well. So when you don't understand something, just ask. There's no such thing as a dumb question in this industry, and it really is a complicated process sometimes, so be sure to ask lots of questions. Tip number six that I have is to consider hiring help when in the moving process. I find that the most stressful part for most people's move is the actual physical moving part of belongings in the process. Moving can be physically straining and stressful for most families, friends, and I find that a lot of arguments take place during this time. I would highly encourage you to automate this process by hiring a local moving company. I've got a lot of contacts that I can get you in touch with, but I also understand that this isn't always an option for most people. I've actually offered to help move many of my clients and done it several times, and I'll tell you why. In one of the earlier transactions that I did, I helped out a young woman find her dream home, and when she got there to, to her dream home, she came with a box truck fully loaded with her mom, who's elderly, and her. When they opened their box truck, it was full to the ceiling, literally crammed, packed, and I looked at them and said, do you all need any help? And her mom went, yes, please. And from that day forward, I've started helping my clients and offering them if they'd like me to help them in their moving process. I love being able to help you all, and that's one of the things that I'm really passionate about. So it is one of the services that if you want me to help you actually physically move, I'm more than happy to do that with you. So those are my six tips in buying a home here in Lexington, and I'm sure many of you have been hanging around to the end of this video to see how to win in this competitive market. The real estate market has been kind of crazy recently, and if you've seen anything on the news, which I'm sure many of you have, if you've been thinking about getting into real estate and buying a home, it has been kind of crazy, and a lot of people are interested in buying a home. And that's mostly because there's a lot of demand with very little supply. And when there's a lot of demand with no supply, that tends to create the bidding wars that we see. Unless a lot of homes are built in the future, which they are starting to be built, but it's very slow process. And there's not as many builders as there used to be in the market and building prices are still high. There's a lot of reason there's not new homes, but it seems unlikely that we'll have enough homes to meet demand anytime soon. So you need to know how to win when it's really competitive. Winning when it's really competitive is actually a lot more simple than many people think it is. It's really all about how you go about your offer. So if there's a house you really love, my tip is really this simple to winning when it's competitive. Give the sellers exactly what they want, if not more. We see all these houses going over asking price and it's really, really hard to mentally bring yourself to paying over what a person's initially asking. But just because they're asking that price, that doesn't mean it's not worth more than what they're asking. I find that a lot of real estate agents and sellers now are actually listing their home below market value in order to start that bidding war that we see on the news. If you're offering asking price on a really competitive home and giving them all kinds of contingencies on things you need done, you might not get that home. I'm not saying drop all contingencies and go way over asking price on every home. It really depends on the kind of home you offer on. Consult with your agent and to find out whether or not it is a really competitive home. If it is a competitive home, you probably should consider going over asking price. Something to keep in mind whenever you're going over asking price on a home. A home's not worth what they're asking for. it. It's worth what someone's willing to pay for. it. You may not win on every house with that strategy, but if it's really competitive, giving them at least what they want, if not more, gives you the best chance possible to get the home. There are a lot more tips and a lot more steps to buying a home than that. So be sure to reach out to a local real estate agent or reach out to us because I am a local real estate agent. I absolutely love it whenever you all reach out and you're thinking about making the move here. If you have questions about Lexington, think about making the move to Lexington, call, text, email me, reach out today. Love it whenever you all reach out. Also, if you like the content that my page is putting out, be sure to subscribe and press the little notification bell down at the bottom so I can continue to give you more great content. I hope you like this video on my tips to making your move to Lexington easy, and I'll catch you next time on the next episode of Living in Lex.